news program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. And we have a question each week. Every person that is listening, this is for you. Do you know Christ as Savior? Have you accepted the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses from all sin? Are you looking for the second coming of Christ? That's why we have on our background scene this is going to be our theme until the Lord comes are you ready for the rapture are you ready this is Christ coming in the clouds this is the most glorious thing that each true believers has to look forward to him coming and this is why we're going to hear the trumpet sound and we are going to be raptured to be with the Lord. Those that have died are going to be raised first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is for true believers that have accepted Christ as personal Savior. He is the only way to get to heaven. And we are going to talk about the Spirit of God today because we have been studying the greatest, greatest inheritance for every true believer. This has been the greatest lessons on all that we have in Christ. And this is John chapter 13 through John chapter 17 and also the book of Ephesians. Now the book of Ephesians and Colossians, these give us the highest revelation that God has given to man. The book of Ephesians is about the body of Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, and he is the head. And this teaches us the fullness of that body, and this is the greatest gift that we have. It's rich privileges and heavenly destiny. These are what he left with us that he told his disciples on the way to the cross. And Ephesians teaches us in Ephesians 1, 3. This is one of the greatest verses. Blessed be God the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. All spiritual blessings. And then we go to Ephesians verse 11, chapter 1, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after, after the counsel of his will. And then verse 18, the eyes of your understanding. This is a wonderful prayer, starting with verse 15, that we, he desires that we faint not at our tribulation. You see, this is why in the last days, people have such great fear. But he tells us, in John, we saw John 14, let not your heart be troubled. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but I have overcome the world. So in verse 18 of this prayer, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of your calling and the riches of the glory of the inheritance in 
the, uh, the saints of God. And then in Ephesians 2, we always go to this Bible verse. This is one of our favorite Bible verses, Ephesians 2, 7. And this is amazing what we're going to know every day in glory. He's going to show something new that in the ages to come, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Now, this is one of the richest and de deepest statements because this is the millennial age when we're going to be reigning a thousand years with Christ, and then the eternal state begins, eternity to eternity, bringing forth something new in glory every day. You see, as we showed you last week, that this is what he has for us as true believers, and the last thing he told his disciples was John chapter 16 verse 33 these things i have spoken this is his last utterance to the disciples before going to the cross that in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world this is victory for us as true believers and not only that but also we're going to find out that victory this week or next week and this week we're going to study about the holy spirit and all of these cannot be in our lives apart from the spirit of god no inheritance apart from this gift let's pray oh our gracious and dear heavenly father we pray for every person that's listening today to know thee as personal Savior. It's not thy will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And this is the confidence we have. If we ask anything according to thy will, we know thou dost hear, and we shall have the petitions we require of thee. Save every person that's listening, and for every person that has no hope that they can know these truths today, and rejoice in the inheritance that thou hast left for us as true believers and rejoice in this hope of the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So as we come to these lessons today, we see once again that just to review these is just going to take us a few minutes to go over our inheritance. The first one is that we had was humility, and this was enforced by his example of washing the disciples' feet in John chapter 13. He left this for us as an example. And then his love, his love as the fountain of our love. And then the heavenly home and his promised coming for us. You see, you must be looking for the rapture. We're to be looking for this every day. And if we are looking for the rapture, then we will be living holy lives. And then his prayer. Our prayer, we can call him Father, and the power that is in his name. The power that we have in prayer. And then peace. This is the secret of his priceless possessions. His peace, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, but my peace I give unto you. And then we see the abiding life, what we are in him and what he is in us. And then joy, his joy with a heart yearning to know it as an unfailing fountain. You see, I know this joy, the abundant life that he wants us to have. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord. And then today, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is one of the things that we must always know, his spirit. And this is, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, none of these are yours. Absolutely none. You have nothing outside of the Spirit of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, 
For as the body is one, now this is the body of believers, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. And Romans 12, verse 15. Now you need to know this. You are my sister and you are my brother if you're a child of God. Romans 12, verse 15. Now these are his words to us as true believers. Every true believer has this body. For as we have many members, now this is 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4, not 15, forgive me. For as we have many members in one body, and our members have not the same office, we all have different ministries, but every one of us are to bear fruit. So we have in many are one body, this is verse 5, Romans chapter 12, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and are members, every one, of one another. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, so we are a child of God by the Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit is a gift. Ho the Holy Spirit is a gift and it is given for holiness. And John, we go back to John chapter 16, beginning in verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for me that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Now, there's seven things that we know that the Holy Spirit has given to us. And this is in chapter 16, verse 12. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come? He will guide you into all truth. That's the first thing. He will guide you. Or he, he shall not speak of himself. You see, the Spirit of God can't work apart from the Word of God. You see, the Holy Sp Jesus Christ came to make known and manifest the Father. The Holy Spirit came to make known and manifest Jesus Christ. You see, this is the living Word. Jesus Christ is the living Word. That's why the Spirit never speaks of himself. Only the word of God. And, but whatsoever he shall hear, the word of God, that shall he speak. Only the word of God. We are to worship in spirit and in truth. Apart from the word, the spirit doesn't work. And he shall speak and he shall show you things to come. He shall show you. You cannot know this book apart from the word of God, the spirit of God. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Now this is why we must understand the truth of the word of God. And this is what he says. Now our Lord is prepared to make the great disclosure that he's going from them. But he is leaving them the Spirit of God to comfort them. He's going to go from them. But if I do not go away, the Spirit of God cannot come. Because see, this is the Godhead. God the Father sent Jesus Christ to the earth. Jesus Christ came to the earth to die on the cross for our sins. Forty days later, he went back to heaven. Ten days after he went back to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to come to dwell in the body of believers. And this happened on the day of Pentecost. That can only happen one time. And then when you receive Christ, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
You see, he doesn't have a body. He has a personality. He feels and he knows and he wills. And apart from him, you can never know this book. These are unspeakable benefits occurring to them from the Spirit's coming, his going from them, so he declares it is expedient for him that he goes away. And now they're going to understand all that he has told them when the Spirit of God comes on the day of Pentecost. Jesus had been but a present without and must always have remained so while he was with them. But the Spirit is coming now to be a presence within. We have the abiding presence of God. If you don't know this doctrine, you will never have any faith of what God can do through you. The Spirit of God is your strength. He is your teacher. And He is your guide. He will guide you into all truths. The Spirit's coming into their hearts, they would become transformed men. Remember Peter? On the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people were saved. That's why we have to have the Spirit of God before we can bear fruit. What the Spirit is given for is embodied in the name used of our Lord, and that is the Comforter. When the Comforter shall come, he will guide you into all truths. So this is going to minister to us in ways that no one has ever known. This is the, his very presence during our Lord's absence. Also to be our strengthening power. The, we must have strength and we must have boldness to give out his word, enabling us to go and to do what is becoming of his own. You see, the Spirit of God will always give us the joy of the Lord because that is the fruit of the Spirit. This includes the work of witnessing. You can never witness without the Spirit of God of which the Spirit of God is the source. The secret and strength of John chapter 16, verse 8. John chapter 16, verse 8. Now this is the Spirit of God, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. You see, you, there's no hope for anybody without the Spirit of God. The truth that Jesus has already spoken, the truth that he has in reserve for them, something that will abide with them until we're raptured to be with the Lord, or either our bodies go to sleep on earth and we wake up in heaven because our soul and spirit go to be with the Lord. Especially does he minister the things of Christ and makes Christ real. This is our Lord's chief legacy, the best of his goods. Because without this, we can never enter heaven. His spirit, moreover, is his master bequest. It is he who enables us to experience all of the other gifts of the Spirit. How shall we live out his humility? You see, the Spirit of God brings humility or his love only by his Spirit. How shall we hold to the hope of his heavenly home and his coming for us only by his Spirit? How shall his peace possess our hearts and minds continually only by his spirit. How shall we live the abiding life only by his spirit? You see, abide in me and I in you. But remember, the most important thing you must always know, that when I have sin in my life that severs my relationship, it, the spirit of God doesn't leave me. But then that takes the blessings from me, and my prayers are hindered. 
and I cannot have joy. This is why this is important that you understand the Holy Spirit is given for holiness. And then only by his spirit, this is, can we know this abiding life. For he is the sap, the vital flow of life in the vine and the branch relationship. How shall we, his joy, flood our souls, even in the dark and difficult days that we're living in today? You see, people are afraid to go out because of the evil and the corruption. But for a believer, if you are out and your time comes that someone has to take your life, you will be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That enemy that is a murderer cannot hurt a true believer. Remember what happened with Stephen. They stoned him to death, and he looked up in heaven, and he saw the Lord. He saw the Lord. They did not hurt him. He was raptured right in the presence of the Lord. This is how we can know these truths. That's why these are the most important lessons in the days in which we're living. So you will not have fear, because fear comes from Satan and not from the Lord. So only by his Spirit can we have this perfect peace if our time comes to leave this life. Have you received this bequest? If you haven't, on the authority of God's Word, you have if you are his own. Now we must turn to Romans 8. Romans 8. Now, as you hear these truths, we're going to ask you these wonderful truths of his word. Romans chapter 8, all of you follow along with me because these are wonderful, wonderful truths that he has for us, beginning in verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see, this is how you know you're a child of God. For we have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we can say, Abba, Father. Now, another thing that we must understand is this. In these lessons, in Matthew chapter 23, we must know what God's Word says about calling anyone Father but Christ. And he tells us this in chapter 23 of the book of Matthew. And he said in verse 8, But be, but be not ye called rabbi. For one is your master, rabbi means teacher, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Verse 9, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. This is his word, and listen at verse 10. See, we're all just servants of God. You think you're better than someone else. That's pride, and God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And verse 10, Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. Verse 11, But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant. We're just servants. Once you see this and know these truths, you will never be proud, because without me, ye can do nothing. And then, in verse 16, all of you, now this is in Romans chapter 8, and you must understand these truths, the Spirit itself beareth witness. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. 
and then verse 18. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that he has for us. Are you a child of God today? This is the question that we want to ask you every week. But are you realizing that you're a child of God, that the Spirit of God is dwelling with you? You see, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Have you so yielded heart and life to him that he is proven himself a quickening, strengthening, beautifying, and transforming presence. You see, as children of God, we are to be changed from glory to glory. And Paul says in Ephesians, and we're going to get uh, what we have in Christ next week. You've got to tune in because these are the most important lessons. The dispensation of the Father, the dispensation of the Son, and the dispensation of the Spirit. Now, in chapter 3, verse 19, Paul tells us about the fullness of the power of God, the fullness of the power of Christ, and the fullness of the Holy Spirit. For if we believe this is the fullness, this means a completeness of what he has for us. As we know that we have his spirit dwelling in us, we will desire to know this book. It will take eternity to comprehend it all. This is Ephesians 1, beginning with verse 15 again. The Holy Spirit who gave us this prayer wants God's people to know more of Christ, to feed on him, and by knowing the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, to be filled with all the fullness of God. Just think of the dimensions of this love. Come unto me, all that is the breadth of his love. The length is from eternity to eternity. His love has no beginning or no end. This is eternal love. Do you know this truth? Have you accepted Christ? If not, call upon him today and say, I want these inheritance. I want the Spirit of God. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. We're washed from our sins in his own blood. And then I'm to live a holy life. Are you looking for the rapture? I pray that every person that's listening will tell one person about Christ and we will have fruit that he commands of us. For whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. You're to bear fruit. Call someone and tell them that Jesus Christ is coming. Call them and give them this New Testament so every person in this city will come to know Christ as Savior.